hello, 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 everybody. I'm not gonna echo every time I talk. Welcome back to another video. I, of course, am Nathan, aka Poop. The announcer for this death battle. I should have had a better name. In today's video, we're going to separate the strong from the weak, the large from the small. In today, 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 this video, we are doing a bracket fight. I'm having so much fun with this. We are pitting the 12 days of Christmas up against each other. If you don't know, the 12 days of Christmas, allow me. So we have a partridge in a pear tree, two turtle doves, three French hens, four calling birds. There's a lot of birds in the 12 days of Christmas. Five golden rings. Six geese a-laying, seven swans a-swimming, eight maids a-milking, nine ladies dancing, 10 lords a-leaping, 11 pipers piping, and 12 drummers drumming. And we're gonna find out which of these is the strongest of the strong, of the fucking ice. So let's start off with a pretty low tier fight. We have a partridge in a pear tree and two turtle doves. Now, I bet you're thinking, like obviously we have the numbers of two turtle doves versus a partridge in a pear tree. But you have to remember that these, that this partridge is native to this pear tree, which means it knows it probably inside and out. And I honestly think that the environmental advantage, because they get to bring the pear tree with them, it is a part of their gimmick. Now, the pear tree is not like a like a tree ant and can come to life and just smash things, because that's not in the lore. So the two turtle doves are honestly at a disadvantage. And I really think that the partridge in a pear tree will be able, through various tactics and strategy, pull a win out against the two turtle doves. Now the numbers are still pretty important, so it would have to be pretty strategic, but one thing you need to know is that like, it's it seems that these turtle doves are kind of hard to separate, which means I feel like it'd be pretty easy for the partridge in a pear tree to sneak up on the turtle doves and get the W. So we're gonna say partridge in a pear tree winning round one. Next round is three French hens and four calling birds. Now, this photo uh, does not do it justice. The birds do not get to bring this tree with them in this photo. So we have three French hens. And for whatever reason, when I was finding photos for this, this was one of the only few photos that I could find that didn't have like the hens with like a beret or like playing an accordion or like holding a baguette. I don't know why there's so much art of hens being stereotypically French, but uh, I, why? The four calling birds, however, they do once again have the numbers in their advantage. And I, I just, I, I feel like hens are more violent than just an every everyday calling bird because these look like they're just like pigeons. I feel like a hen will really mess you up. Like it, I'm gonna go with, I'm actually gonna go with the hens on this round. Five golden rings and six geese a laying. I feel like I'm just ranking birds at this point in my life. Um, why, I'm just ranking, I'm, what, am I just power scaling birds? Is that what I'm doing? I feel like a geese is unable to smash and completely destroy a golden ring. No matter how mighty the goose may be, I don't think they possess the physical strength to do it. So the golden rings do have durability in their favor. However, the only way that they could possibly destroy them is if they eat them, but I'm pretty sure a goose does not have the digestive ability to consume a golden ring. So there's five golden rings and six geese, which means there's one extra goose that won't die. So I think the geese actually, based off of numbers, will be able to get this. All right, now we have seven swans of swimming and eight maids of milking. Uh, they do not, I don't think, Actually, no, I think they do get whatever animal they are milking. They do get like a cow or whatever it is that, that they're milking. And they have milk buckets. And I think that they would absolutely 
fucking destroy the swans. Are you crazy? These swans are going down. The eight maids of milking take the W. We're taking care of this left side of the bracket before we move on to the right side of the bracket. We have a partridge in a pear tree versus the three French hens. I feel like the brutality and just the general instincts of the hens kind of makes them come out on top. You know what, I'm gonna skip the intro. You already know the eight maids of milking are taking the W here. Once again, eight maids of milking. Now, this is when it really starts to get difficult. We have nine ladies dancing and 10 lords of leaping. So the nine ladies dancing looks like nine ladies dancing. The Ten Lords of Leaping just looks like some guy named Todd. Like, who is- this is not a lord. He's wearing a crew neck sweater. I'm not basing their stats off the photo I choose. I'm just basing, basing it off the raw potential. And I feel like there's so much more violence in dancing than there is just, like, leaping. So I feel like there's more potential to be able to do more damage while dancing than just being some guy named Todd who likes to fucking hop around a little bit. So the nine ladies dancing are taking this W here. Now time for the Battle of the Bards. As you can see, we have 11 pipers piping and 12 drummers drumming. This video is fucking stupid. So this is clearly a musical battle, not necessarily a musical skill battle, but seeing which of them is able to incapacitate their opponent with, it seems, their instruments. This might be a hot take. I feel like the 11 Pipers piping is kind of slept on. They're very agile. They got a lot of mobility to them. The 11 Drummers drumming, you ever held a bass drum? That shit's heavy. You don't, you can't really see in front of you all that well. Honestly, I feel like the agility would go to the 11 Pipers piping. We have nine ladies dancing and 11 Pipers piping. I, once again, I feel like this goes down to the dancers because I feel like, once again, there's so much mobility and like they, like sure, the Pipers have agility, but the dancers have even more. What the Pipers had in the last round does not carry over to what the dancers have in this round. So I'm gonna have to say the nine ladies dancing are gonna have to go to the finals. And now here we are at the finals, finals, finals. So, we have eight maids of milking and nine ladies dancing. This is gonna be a tough one, because on the one hand, you have eight people with milk buckets and a cow. And then you have the dancers who have a pretty high armor class stat and would be fairly difficult to be able to catch with a milk bucket, catch with some hands, whatever you got. I honestly feel like out of all of these, it comes down to a match of agility. These are trained professional dancers. Look at them. They are in, they are perfectly in uniform. There is not a flaw in their technique. I'm starting to question the teamwork of the eight maids of milking because like, does it require eight people to milk one cow? This feels like too many cooks in the kitchen. I, I honestly feel like the champion in the 12 days of Christmas, the strongest, most powerful of the groups is the nine ladies dancing. Well, there you have it, everybody. We have the strongest of the strong. We beat all the birds. Thank you so much for, I, mean, I need some like outro music. So let me, burp, 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 burp. thank you all for coming to this great match we tested to find out which of the 12 days of Christmas was the absolute mightiest. I will see you all tomorrow.